A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Your eyes, raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Midian and Ephah. All from Sheba shall come bearing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. The kings of Tarshish and the isles shall offer gifts. The kings of Arabia and Saba shall bring tribute. All kings shall pay him homage. All nations shall serve him. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word, that I too may go and do him homage. 
After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So in order to understand well what is going on in uh, today's feast, today's celebration, and the readings, uh, we'll do a little bit of history. Okay, let's go back to the year 1000 B.C. That is the year that King David is ruling in Israel. Okay, 300 years later, that is in the year 700 B.C. or thereabouts, God raises up the prophet Micah. And this prophet communicates his message in which he says... But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. So that's a 300-year difference. Bethlehem, where David was born, is just a little bitty town. Okay, that's why the prophet says, who are little to be among the clans of Judah. He's talking about a little town. Bethlehem, after the great King David, did not become a place of pilgrimage. Okay, everybody knew that David was from there, but it remained a small little place. And so 300 years later, the prophet Micah is foretelling uh, the coming of the Messiah, that the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. And you may, you know, look at what Micah is saying there and say, well, you know, that's not all that obvious that he's referring to the Messiah. But we need to understand that that's how the Jews understood it. Okay, from the time of Micah, for the next 700 years, they were looking to Bethlehem, the city of David, for the Messiah to be born there. They knew that. And that's why when the Magi show up from the east and they say, where is the newborn king? Herod, who is not a Jew, he turns and he asks the chief priests and the scribes. He says, where is the Messiah to be born? And what do the chief priests and the scribes do? They, they point to the prophet Micah and they say, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. So that's how they understood the prophet Micah. That's where the Messiah is going to be born. In fact, this would become a point of contention 30 years later. Okay, When Jesus is now around 30 years old, and he is preaching to the people, and he is proclaiming himself to be the Messiah, and he's working miracles to prove it, one of the point, points of contention was that, well, wait a second, he's not from Bethlehem. This is Jesus of Nazareth. This is what we read in St. John's Gospel. There was this dispute among the people. Others said, this is the Christ. But some said, is the Christ to come from Galilee? Right? That's where Nazareth is. Has not the scripture said that the Christ is descended from David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David was? You say they didn't know that Mary and Joseph were of the house of David. And when Caesar Augustus called the census and everyone had to return to their town of origin, right, to um, apply for this census, to, to inscribe themselves. 
the Holy Family, they had to venture from Nazareth down to Bethlehem. That's what brought them there. And Our Lady was pregnant with our Lord. So the people, when Jesus was around 30, they didn't know those details. Now, Bethlehem, this little town that Micah prophesies from which the Messiah will be born, okay? It is no longer a little town. The population in, of Bethlehem in the wider area is 100,000 people. That's four times the population of Westerly. And it's densely populated. There's 7,000 people per square mile. Okay? That is 10 times uh, the popu- density uh, of population here in Westerly. So it is no longer a small place, which means what? we can be absolutely certain that this prophecy of Micah has already been fulfilled. If there is somebody out there who is still waiting for the Messiah to be born in Bethlehem, they're just plain wrong because it is no longer a little town. And we know that this isn't the only prophecy fulfilled by Jesus of Nazareth, right? There are many other prophecies And so the Magi are enlightened by God. Okay, they were not of the chosen people, but they were men of good will. They were seekers of truth. And what does Jesus say in the gospel? He says, he who seeks, finds. And if somebody is seeking the truth about ultimate questions, right? Why am I here? Where am I going? What is the true religion? These type of things. They can come to a knowledge of the truth. God will open the doors. He who knocks, the door will be opened. And he who seeks, finds. So these wise men, they were seekers. They come from a long way off. And God is miraculously guiding them by the appearance of this star. The light of that star represents the light of truth that they are seeking. And lo and behold, in following the truth as best as they know it, where does it lead them to? It leads them to Jesus and Mary. This is very significant. Jesus said, I am the truth, and whoever is of the truth hears my voice. And so these magi, they heard the voice of our Lord. And as the scripture says, it led them um, to the stable. And who was there? Who did they find? Jesus and Mary. This is very significant. This is what all hearts are seeking ultimately. In this world and in the next. This is what we are made for. To come to know and love Jesus Christ, the only Savior of the world, and have as our spiritual mother the Blessed Virgin Mary. And so in our own lives, let's examine ourselves, right? Are we uh, sincere seekers of the truth? Are we looking to obtain the Lord's enlightenment in our daily lives? Are we allowing the light of his truth to lead us and guide us through this world, which will then uh, lead us and guide us to eternal life, right? Are we allowing that? Or are we like the other persons mentioned in the gospel, right? Herod, who was not open to the truth, and all Jerusalem with him, they're in upheaval when they hear this news about the newborn king, right? Because they're not disposed, they're not ready to embrace the Savior of the world. Instead, we have some simple shepherds who, in fact, were ready to embrace. So notice, God intervenes with them, too. And so he sends the angels to declare to them, I glory to God in the highest and peace to men of good will. So where do we find ourselves? Right in the gospel, which of these characters do we most associate with in our day-to-day lives? Let's strive to imitate uh, the, what, the Magi, who are wise men, right? They're living wisely in this world, seeking the truth, embracing the truth once it is found. 
And uh, the same thing of the humble shepherds, living in humility and disposed to receive the grace of salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.